On this episode of Designer Notes, we'll be reviewing one of the best chronographs in the world. The only catch is, it's coming from that side of the world. And then we'll discuss one of the rarest Seamasters of all time that nobody's talking about. And finally, in our viewer comments, one of the viewers expressed their disappointments despite of my best efforts to sell them the watch. China is the leading exporter of watches in 2021 with over 400 million units sold worldwide. If you combine Switzerland, Germany, United States, and even throw in Hong Kong in the mix, they would still need 200 million units to catch up with what China is able to export. <laughs> Suffice to say, China wants its figures thick and easy to get. However, Seagull, with its new line of watches, is trying to break this mold and try to offer the best and premium watches money can buy. And that is thoroughly exemplified with this mechanical sports chronograph from Seagull. Yeah. Now the question is, will you be convinced to actually get one? This video is brought to you by Horology Story. Let's begin with a much needed history lesson. It all began in the seventh largest city in China, Tianjin. In 1955, four men were given 100 days by the Chinese government to create China's first watch manufacturer. This is how we got the Wu Xing watch company, meaning five star. They developed military issue watches for the country. In 1958, they rebranded to Wu Yi in celebration of the May 1st labor movement along with the new logo. In China's efforts to export wrist watches, the company used the name Dongfeng in 1966 meaning East Wind. As the company develops both mechanical and quartz watches, they rebranded once again to the now more recognizable name Seagull. This one stuck ever since and it made a mark worldwide. While many view Seagull as a mass production brand, they are a legitimate horological manufacturer capable of producing high complication pieces such as minute repeaters and dual axis tourbillons. It goes without saying that for pockets deeper than the Mariana Trench, Seagull has something to offer. For us who must work from 9 to 5, a great looking sports chronograph can do, such as this Seagull Sports Chrono. The dimensions are very familiar with this one. The diameter is 43.5mm and the lug distance is 49.9. The lug width is a decent 22mm, which is 2mm more than my preference. The thickness is 13.5mm, just thick enough for your typical mechanical chronograph. This one is using a manufacturer caliber ST1901 that beats at 21,000 beats per hour, has 22 joules, and has around 45 to 50 hours of power reserve. These are very nice specs that deserves some wood surfaces and candlelight ambiance to fully endear this piece to your eyes. But of course, it's your wrist that gets first dibs. Wrists like this familiar hairy kind can pleasingly wear this mechanical beauty. It passes the eye test off the cuff with more to enjoy. This dial is one of the best I've seen done in this side of the world. It has a careful balance with its sub-registers. The branding is a bit oversized but you're quickly pulled in with these neatly applied indexes. These indexes are pleasingly partially recessed in the rehout which has a very nice brushed texture. I love this contrast against the polished frames of each index. You can see this dimensionality in every angle. Zoom close on the subdials and you'll notice these well-defined radial surfaces for the register scales. This is a fantastic touch that elevates the aesthetics above other chronographs in the same price range. It also pops really well against the matte dial and the sunburst finish of the sub-registers. This maximizes the light play beautifully. All of this is aided by a very clear sapphire crystal in its AR coating. From this part of the watch, you can see how they managed to keep the costs down by using just one sapphire crystal instead of two. The display case back uses a mineral glass. The bezel is also a source of pleasure with its clear numeral prints. The textures sets it apart from being a homage to the modern Daytona or the Zenit Chronomaster Sport. Its clean and pronounced chamfer also helps reduce the shape profile. The great aesthetic choices are also in full display with the bracelet finish. This has a reversed configuration as the polished parts are the outer links rather than the center. Another plus are the screw pins that make it very easy to resize the links. The clasp feels dated though, but at least it has these sturdy bridges. 
The case uses the same attention to the finish with its brushed surface spread all over the side. There are some more polished elements such as the crown guards, pushers, and crown. The seagull signature is firmly pressed on the crown that may fool some people that it's a different S-branded watch that hails from Japan. But there's no trickery in operating this manually wound chronograph. The non-threaded crown is pleasing to operate and the pushers are satisfying to push. It's highly likely you're pushing these chronograph pushers because it simply exists rather than actually timing your speed. But don't worry, we won't tell your friends about it. Your secret's safe with us. But Seagull's valuable secret is the movement inside. This is Seagull's own caliber that was based on the Venus chronograph platform. During the golden age of mechanical chronographs, there were three main calibers, Lemania, Valju, and Venus. When Venus needed the money to fund their caliber development, they tried selling these blueprints of the Venus caliber 175 to the Soviets. When it was rejected, it eventually got bought by the Tianjin watch company and modified it heavily for their production. This may all sound like the spy novel origin story of a syndicate that vowed to rule the world, but the real diabolical issue here is that many people think that this is a mere clone of the Venus movement. That is far from the truth. This current iteration, the ST1901, is a real 22 joule in-house caliber, both engineering-wise and by legality. Seagull owns both arms of the argument. Priced at $600, it sells just over the affordable micro-brand standards, but sells well under any mechanical chronograph out there. Add the fact that you're getting an in-house caliber movement, and the value proposition is really hard to beat. But I think the biggest argument against Seagull is the fact that it comes from a place where imitation is nowhere near taboo but simply viewed as an alternative. A level of acceptance is needed to enjoy these pieces, and in my opinion, Seagull welcomes such a challenge with open arms. The same spirit of persistence that launched the brand almost 70 years ago lives on in their designs that is gradually gaining adoption from the West. So don't be surprised if it takes the ever so slightest of pushes for you to own one for yourself. I have a confession to make. I've been eyeing some Seagull models for quite some time now, but I never pulled the trigger. So you may be wondering why the hesitation? Well, one word explains that. G-Shock. Every time that I look for an affordable brand or any micro brand for that matter, G-Shock comes in and releases a collection that will entice me to buy instead. Because G-Shock apparently owns my credit card, but to many of you who are not slaves to G-Shock or other brands for that matter, the Seagull Mechanical Chronograph Sport or Sports Mechanical Chronograph might just be the one to win you over because it really is the best that Seagull has to offer in its collection. Try it out. Speaking of confessions, I've been trying to make this content for quite some time now. You may remember that I released this video about the limited edition James Bond uh, Seamasters or uh, watches from Omega. And you did point out that I missed a couple of models here and there. So I'm trying to find a way to present to you that video in a fascinating and entertaining way. But during my research, I uncovered this super rare limited edition Seamaster that no one was talking about. In fact, this $700,000 Seamaster was so interesting and so fascinating that everybody thought it was a hoax. For the 7 billion time in the short lifespan of the show, we are going to let you all know that Omega loves their limited edition collections. Looking at just the Speedmaster, buyers can start at the bottom of Omega's luxurious offerings, the regular version. As they build their cachet, they can step up to the limited edition pieces and could ultimately graduate to the most exclusive of collections such as the 22-piece six-figure priced missions set. This type of multi-level approach to exclusivity has proven to be both lucrative and supremely appealing to wealthier collectors. While the NASA space program casts a wider net to capture the most audience, Omega is more than willing to narrow down their demographic to produce pieces for the even more privileged few. We can see this with the Seamaster collection that has produced countless special editions throughout the years. Within these editions, 
The subcategory is produced as its own range of limited editions. The Olympic editions would come to mind in this regard and of course the 007 series. Within the series, a more limited, extremely hard to get few pieces will be released. They could be hard to get due to limited production or by simply being multiple times more expensive than the typical limited edition. It's fascinating already to see such a production structure to be successful. But then, I stumble upon this unicorn Seamaster. This is the Neiman Marcus Fantasy Gift Set Seamaster. This model is made of a platinum case and bracelet combo and is fitted with a pleasingly textured raised numeral bezel. The dial is also made of 950 platinum, clearly setting this apart from the rest of the limited edition James Bond models. From the back, you can see the similar kind of display case back as that of the 50th anniversary version showcasing the more luxurious version of the Caliber 8806, the Caliber 8807. Other details feature the case serial plate on the side, platinum laced leather strap, and more goodies inside a commemorative suitcase. And finally, it comes with it a free, one of one scale, actually functional limited edition Aston Martin Super Ligera, co designed by Daniel Craig himself. All that for the price of $700,007. I see what you did there, Neiman Marcus. While many would argue that the Seamaster is the freebie in this set, we watch folks know better and we will not be fooled. This is the exact same Super Ligera that was released by Aston Martin months before. You don't have to be a car nut to know that. The good folks at Bond Lifestyle pointed this out in their article. On the top, we could see the marketing image of the OHSS Super Ligera. Below is what Neiman Marcus released. <laughs> we can totally see the photoshopping skills of one employee in Neiman Marcus offices. This now begs the question, is this gift set even real in the first place or is it an elaborately photoshopped hoax? Well, let's try and do some accounting work with the $700,000 price tag first. The limited edition DBS will set you back $380,000 based on the retail price months before this gift set. A full platinum case and bracelet Seamaster retails at $66,000, but assuming this is a Diver 300M model and is limited edition, it can also easily touch the $90,000 plateau. There are other perks such as flying to the premiere for the movie and that 12% of the proceeds of each set will be donated to charity. We would be looking at a possible $575,000 cost for Neiman Marcus to produce one of these gift sets. That's a potential of over $125,000 of profit for each of the parties involved for one set of this fantasy gift. It can be a bit more money actually if we consider all of the prices at cost value. That may seem an absurd amount of money but seeing how these luxury brands work, this is actually not that strange. So is Neiman Marcus trolling us with this gift set or is it actually a real thing? A watch nerd is here to save the day. Thanks to RJ Brower of Fratello, we have the only known live image of this elusive platinum Neiman Marcus James Bond Seamaster. It is real folks, that is one of only seven in the world. There may have been other more expensive Seamasters in the past but this certainly is one of the most extraordinary. While we certainly could complain that many limited editions are, well, not really limited at all, Omega is showing us that we can have those kinds of not so limited editions, but at the same time, they can also make one that's as elusive as the British Pie himself. This is really one of the rarest unicorns that Omega has ever produced. It's so rare, in fact, that I've seen no videos of it except for that clip from Neiman Marcus. This really is specially made for that seven diehard fans of James Bond in the world. Clearly, Omega, Neiman Marcus, and Daniel Craig know what they're doing because this is a blueprint for outrageous exclusivity. It's time for your viewer comments. Let's begin with the comments from the last show. The Watch Guy Inc. said, Order the Cal through your code. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, The Watch Guy Inc. 
And yes, every time that you order these uh, watches using the code on the descriptions of my videos, you truly are helping out the channel because that gives us credit. And that credit that we get from these brands get reinvested in the channel so that we can produce better content for you by equipment, even though it's been a while since I bought an equipment. It's probably funding something else, but I'm not gonna disclose that to you. But nevertheless, it is helping out the channel and thank you so much to everyone who does that. And also, we've been trying to work out something for everyone, especially a giveaway. If you've seen the uh, past videos, we're doing giveaways now. And later in this video, you'll find out how you can participate in these giveaways. Eka Agustian Chia says, Wow, Karen Jamnya, Terum Tama Ta Vigian Dialnya, Seperti Peta Atlas. That's Indonesian. <laughs> I tried my best to read that, but here's the translation. Wow, what a cool watch, especially on the dial, like an Atlas map. Yes, thank you, Eka from Indonesia. If you've seen uh, lately, we've had some Indonesian uh, viewers coming in. It's because of that uh, said giveaway. So thank you all of my Indonesian viewers, new Indonesian viewers brought to us by Horology Story in the partnership of that amazing um, channel. And this is going to be a uh, long-term, hopefully long-term uh, partnership with them and hopefully the Indonesian crowd would join in in this crazy channel that we have and vice versa, you know. So if you want to support or to find some interesting watches, you can go and hop on to Horology Story and subscribe to them. It, they mostly have Indonesian language uh, videos, but they have so many great watches, especially in the micro brand seen and they also have this uh, English caption so you can still understand but whatever I miss you can probably find there in horology story Marcus Lieberman says Jason I must say that was the best episode that I've seen of yours he is talking about like the other uh, episode where I talked about um, or the other show that where I talked about many things sexism and uh, women in, in in the watch industry you covered many serious issues that most YouTubers dare to tread. I saw an article years ago stated that men have better peripheral vision than women due to the years of hunter-gatherer experience. Yes, that is true. Now, I found that um, research by... Um, it's actually not just one institution that, that uh, saw that, but it's a collection of other uh, researches that I gathered there. But because it truly is... Uh, an explanation why men predominantly love watches and the details in them and why they collect watches so it is one possible explanation but of course it's not the absolute explanation to everything there's always an exception to the rule there's always uh, these little details that we uh, tend to overlook but in general that's what it was why uh, men like watches but he goes on to say this is what I actually wanted to address you didn't mention today is Christmas. I'm Jewish. Does that make you Buddhist, Muslim, atheist? Of course, it does not matter. However, I'm just curious. Well, to tell you the truth, I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses and I do not celebrate many of these traditional holidays. Even though I actually, in hindsight, I haven't been um, celebrating any of these holidays even before I became a Jehovah's Witness. Um, to me, really, what matters is that you spend this time with your dearest friends, the uh, family, your loved ones. And that's what really makes it a celebration and not just the date. And quite frankly, we can celebrate anytime that we want. And I recognize that, that this time of the, the year, many of you uh, try to spend time with your family and your loved ones. And I think that's something that's really good and um, worth our uh, time and our effort. Because especially during the pandemic, that really hindered us from associating with these loved ones. So uh, this is something that really we want to take advantage of. Ray Ray says, love how you roll. I'm gonna go for that multiverse thank you. Also, hopefully you use my code. The t-shirt could do with an iron. Okay, as a very authentic pirate, when faced with the choice of rum 
and shirt iron you know pretty much what I'm going to choose all the time right so no to shirt irons but yes to rum also you're banned from the show for suggesting that uh, I buy a shirt iron until you iron my shirt for me Tim Hassan says hot girls are waiting here fire heart heart well first of all if you're going to troll or fish um, for this in this channel you have to do it properly you have to add a whatsapp or a telegram contact number on your user handle otherwise how, what are they going to click on where's go where are we going to go to see those hot girls so there you already have a problem Tim Hassan and second don't use your actual name as part of your user handle because Tim this probably is the Tim that we know you shouldn't be using your name on, on your handle okay so you better learn otherwise your fishing activity or your fishing technique is very raw unpolished and quite frankly irrelevant I'm Vogue says I discovered your videos because you were mentioned on Tim Wright's show talking watch speaking of Tim and since then I have been enjoying your videos and content white heart from London thank you for supporting support supporting supporting our content um, I'm Bog, I am I'm Bog. and you're probably the only good thing that came out from Tim Nick Corleone says nice track to top Jason how old new is it? Do you know the Adidas product code for it, please? It should be on the white care label. It's usually made up of six characters comprising of two letters followed by four numbers. Bro, watch content. We want watch content, watch comments in this channel. That's all, that's all we talk about. We don't talk about anything else that's not watch related. If you've seen all of our viewer comments, it's all just watch related, nothing else. No tracksuits nothing above of my attire please you're banned from the show okay well and by the way the the code is cw7474 dark star says i think rs65 has a better value for the money than Judor black bay okay so let's put those two things together let's put the Judor black bay here and let's put the rs diver 65 here so let's compare the two um the first thing I noticed is that the massive difference in the power reserve. Oris has 120 hours of power reserve against the BB5870. The warranty is also twice as long with Oris giving the caliber 400 over 10 years of coverage, which is amazing. And then there's the price with the latest Diver 65 going for $3,300 while the BB58 is 4100 uh, the BB58, however, has a better aesthetics and is more wearable with its slimmer profile. The Diver 65 also has a larger presence with its 40mm case, larger dial, and narrower bezel. Okay, so for me, I would choose the BB58 for purely aesthetic reasons. But Darkstar is right. He is um, talking about value and the, B and the Oris Diver 65 is the better value compared to the BB58. But... I'm going to choose the BB58 uh, against the Oris Diver because I don't like the Oris Diver myself. It's a personal preference and that goes to show how vain and aesthetically inclined I am compared to other people in the watch community. Next is Steve Moreno. Is there a glitch in the matrix? Seems like recently there's been a lot of reposted videos. Makes me want to ignore the notifications now. I'm sorry about all of the um, videos and content that I've been releasing I've been barraging all of you and your notifications probably be like um, sounding off every single day but there is no glitch in the matrix or maybe there is a glitch in the matrix I have been releasing um, videos more often than usual or than before but since I switched to this longer video format I talked about that in the last uh, episode and it's been helping the channel for uh, for a while so it's going to be this format for the next foreseeable future however Steve gave me an idea for this uh, instead of me just really re-releasing 
these content, I'm going to insert some new clips or some new segments within those videos. So if you find those new clips, mention me by using at design atelier on the comments and um, adding the timestamp of when those new clips began in this video. And if you do so in the comments, I will find it though, because it has that at design atelier mentioned. Once you do that, I'm going to include you into our new section, which is the Horolo Horological Pirate Hall of Fame. All right, can we do that? We already have some horological pirates out there. I'm going to present it later in this um, video. And you'll be included in that if you see these new segments in the videos. And so with that, for being instrumental in this new idea, we're going to include Steve Moreno in the Horological Pirate Hall of Fame. But also we're going to ban him for 64 seconds for noticing that I've been re-releasing many of these videos. Northwest at Night says, Without even watching, I am picking Tiso. Something about Seiko rubs me the wrong way. Well, lesson for everyone, never let Seiko rub you in any way. Please. Ken Melendez says, Other advantage to all black version is matching the side buttons instead of the stock chrome of the 2100s when modding. He's talking about the release of the full metal Casio Oaks. And yes, that is a good point. The buttons don't match. You have to keep that in mind. The, the buttons usually don't match the metal casings of these new full metal Casios or even those GM2100 models. I was able to actually see one of these full metal Casio Oaks in the wild in one of our ADs here in the island. And it's not really black. It's actually gunmetal gray, really dark gunmetal gray. And it's so amazing to hold. And I'm actually trying to gather some funds and actually get one. Hopefully, we'll get one soon and review it in the channel. And especially compare it to the other mod uh, mod uh, cases that I got from SKX Pods. So hopefully, that's something to look forward to. Is stock R says excellent review, but the watch, even your brilliant review with great strap options, can't make it appealing. Now, this is really the sad reality of reviewing watches. Actually, many people may criticize me for this because I have a more, more of a designer's natural inclination to look for the selling point of a product. I think I've mentioned that a couple of times in this uh, show. But um, because of that, I tend to not mention the negatives of a watch. Many people may even think that I'm dishonest uh, for doing that or a shill to the brand who's sending me uh, the watches. No, not really. I also do mention some negative stuff from times, but I tend to focus more on the selling point. So I really am trying to sell you the watch. That's really not a, not a secret there, you know. But despite of my best efforts, especially with those really um, cool looking transitions and, and strap changes, <laughs> cool, if I may say so myself, <laughs> trying to put my, myself in a pedestal there. But really, um, that part of my product reviews is me trying to find some fun and entertainment for myself during the production. I find really, um, uh, entertaining and it really brings joy to my heart that I find uh, that I'm able to achieve an effect that I was thinking and, and during those uh, segments I'm really having fun while I'm doing those trap changing um, effects but even so it's inevitable that some watch designs will be unappealing to, to people because what may be appealing to me may not be appealing to other people and the same watch that um, East Store is talking about here, we already have two comments saying that, oh, okay, we're, we're, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to look for look look out for that brand. So that is uh, a risk that you you take as a viewer when you watch these videos. Are you going to let this person entice you to buying a watch when you truly don't like it? So it really is up to you to make a sound mature decision whether you're going to be enticed by a person like me an influencer you may call it or just really uh, find your taste and stick to it 
And I'm, I'm glad that actually his talk um, stuck to his guns and honestly said his comment. Gavin Zverdlov says, If you are desperate to own a watch, just go to a gray market dealer like I did. I purchased a new unworn Rolex precious metal watch and I heart it prayer Santa emoji face. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we can learn a few things from Gavin here. If you really want a watch and you have the money to buy it and you have the opportunity to do so, just go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why we buy things, not just watches, but anything for that matter. But regardless of that fact, we actually tend to consider a lot more things because we're humans and we humans are emotional creatures inherently. We tend to consider what our wives would say or what our sons would uh, react to when we purchase these watches. Oh, you purchase a watch that's more than the retail. Oh, that's stupid. Why would you do that? Or maybe that um, friend of ours on Instagram that would ready to say, Oh, nice pickup, Jay. But then behind the phone screen, they're laughing at you because they got the same watch for almost half the price in their local AD. Uh, these are the things that we think about before we even pull the trigger, before we even swipe that credit card. And that's, there, there's nothing wrong with that. That's really just us being conscient beings, conscientious about uh, our decisions. That's actually what makes us special. However, if you're able to actually move past that and make a sound decision on your own without the baggage or without the shackles of these considerations, then you truly are a little bit more mature and you have a more solid focus on your purchasing ability, on your purchasing manners. And actually, that is a skill that we all need to develop. So, in hindsight, just to, you know, um, get rid of that anxious feeling, just buy the watch. That's what Gavin here is saying. Now, I don't fully agree with that myself because we really need to... Uh, put into mind why we are buying these watches. We really need to make a sound decision, not some brash or quick um, decision because simply we can afford it. That is um, uh, something that I truly believe. And that brings us to the other point. We have to remember, this is the second lesson that we can learn from Gavin's um, remark here. We have to define what desperate is. Well, it's defined as having a great need or desire for something. If you're desperate for a watch, you have a much, much bigger problem at hand than the purchase itself. Because honestly, a watch is an object that will rot, scratch, break, dent, get stolen, can be melted, can be burned, can lose value, or can just sit there accumulating dust. It's just an object. It's not a source of lasting happiness and satisfaction. Remember that movie, The Terminal? Where Tom Hanks plays this man who's stuck in the airport and he went through all of these um, ordeals and hardships just to get this, spoiler alert, uh, signature for his dad that passed away as a promise and again spoiler alert he gets the signature at the end of the movie it's a very nice movie a feel-good story but you don't think or you don't stop and think that after that he has to go back to the airport and he's probably going to be arrested after the credits they don't show that he has to actually fly back to Krokosia where the nation is has crumbled and is in a rebuilding mode because of the war. We have to think about that. After the purchase of our watches, you may purchase this Grail watch or you may be able to finally complete this collection. There is the day after that. These stories are stories that we connect to our watches, that we attach to these watches and we converse about them, we make videos about them, we, we talk about them with our friends. But after that, there's still life 
that we need to go to. We still need to eat. We still need to work. We still need to go to back to our wives and our uh, sons and daughters. Hopefully, that's something. <laughs> the watch. Hopefully, the watch purchase didn't break that up, because these are really the ones that are the source of our happiness. Why not make a book, create art, make music? These are. Things, our, our ideas, concepts that really would bring us lasting happiness rather than objects. Because objects can disappear, can you know, deteriorate. And if you're hinging or you're hinging your desire in these objects, then you may be setting yourself up to actually uh, depressing desperation. And finally, Aussie Expat says, I dare you to find a single video in my channel where I say anything nice about Omega. Wow, okay. Here's another one of those that dares me to promote their channel or slyfully, offhandedly promote their channel. Dare me to look into their channel and then hope that I put the, their channel in my videos. But thank you so much, Aussie and like what I said in the previous video, I'm not going to be tricked anymore into promoting another channel. However, when I look into Aussie Expats channel, I find some really interesting videos that this channel... We interrupt this program to acknowledge our partners in Horology Story. We were giving away the spoils of our conquests, and the first winner of the giveaway season was chosen a few hours ago. Setelah tanggal satu yang ikut satu dua tiga ah, anjir yang jadi si dimas bete banget ini aduh valerian boys tepuk tangannya kecil banget <laughs> satria kaligis won the seagull sports choreograph that we featured in this episode congratulations and enjoy your bounty as pirates of the high seas, our treasure chest is always full and will always need to make room for more spoils. So we are sharing with you all another giveaway and this one is the Mitch Maze Chronicle. To participate in this second round of the giveaway, you must do the following. Comment on this post of Horology Stories Instagram page and tag 10 of your friends. Post a reshot of your watch or collection on Instagram, tagging Design Atelier Aruba and Horology Story. Add the hashtag HSXDA2. That's it. These are very easy steps for horological pirates like you, so get over there and start working. Let's wrap up this program before we get carried away. And now that we've seen Aussie Expat's channel, it's truly amazing that he's not as popular as Nico. He is a hidden gem in the watch community. And now it's time for Mr. Zilos. The next bond watch should be a Damascus Zelos. Thank you so much, and that will be all for this show. See you next time, and see you until that inevitable rehashing of all these segments into individual videos. In our viewer comments, one of the viewers expressed their disappointments despite of my best efforts of selling them the watch. Boohoo. Why did, I, why did I say boohoo there? Nick Corleone says, Nick Corleone says, nice tracksuit top, Jason. Come on. Can you stop honking? It was almost nine. On this episode of the Center Notes, we're going to be... We're <clears throat> On this episode of the Center Notes, this Notes, Really?